Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in this series are shown in chronological order. So if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. Hey everyone, before we start this week's episode, I would like to announce that registration for our 2011 photo workshop trek will be opening on October 17th. This year we will not be visiting Everest, but instead we'll be trekking to a mountain in western Tibet called Mount Kailash. Kailash is a very spiritual and holy mountain, and it's the favorite trek of most of my Sherpa friends. According to a local legend out there, doing a complete circumambulation or walking around Mount Kailash wipes your karmic slate clean. How cool is that? All the information for the 2011 workshop can be found on a new website I've set up called HimalayanWorkshops.com. I'm very excited to say that the Kailash Trek will be our most affordable trip to date and will also be a relatively short trip at just over two weeks. I know that many people have wanted to join us in the past but haven't been able to afford the three to four weeks that the other trips have lasted. If you're interested, please read through the site and sign up for the newsletter. Registration this year will be different than in the past years as we'll be charging a small, refundable registration fee to try to cut down on casual registrations from people who really were not going to be able to join us and simply signed up for fun. Now that causes a lot of extra work for me, and to tell you the truth, a lot of worrying and hair pulling, so I'd like to try to avoid that this time around. Again, please visit HimalayanWorkshops.com for all of the details, and we hope to see you at Kailash in 2011. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 140, Pillow Talk. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. Same lineup this week that we had last week. Uh, so we've got Tilo and John Fair calling in from Germany. We have John Coleman, Steve Wolf, and Kyle Anderson calling in from the U.S. And Andy, once again, is in South Africa. Uh, getting ready to do some field work so how are all of you doing today doing great great, great. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right this uh this week uh as promised we're going to descend from dimoche and we're going to do a bit of a video workshop i know that uh, the majority of people on the trek were shooting stills but there was some interest in some of the video uh tutorials that i was uh, able to give and so hopefully um, this will benefit some other people. It's uh, pretty basic stuff, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And see, this week we make it all the way down. I, I can't remember the name of the town. We we actually went through. Loch Loch Was that was that the one? Because yeah, we we we're gonna spend the night in Tangboche, but um, I think it was all packed, and so we kept we kept going a little bit further. And uh, I thought it turned out really nice. So. I was pleased with it, but we are going to be back in the uh, tree line uh, pretty soon, so that really was a, a neat experience. So I'd say without further further ado, let's uh, head back up to right around, right, right below Dingboche. So here we go. Oh, I knew this would happen one day. Oh, actually, we started Good Dingboche. <laughs> <laughs> what a face. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Um, just <coughs> waking up. <coughs> this is not my normal cough in the morning. Just to let you know. Here, hold on a second. I gotta turn I off gave my, my cough I gotta turn to off him. my filter. Here, my ND filter. All right, it's brighter now. Uh, so what, what, what are you gonna say, Monica? Uh, I think I gof gave my cough to him. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's just the, the odd morning cough. Let me open that for you so you can actually see inside. Uh, I'm feeling better now. I slept like a baby. You did? Yes, and because of all this codeine and anti cough medication, <laughs> I think she, I was knocked out. Yeah, <laughs> I think she took like 10, pill, 10 pills last night. <laughs> She's like, okay, I can't take it any longer. <laughs> um, 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 um. <laughs> just take it. Take everything I can get my hands so, on. So yeah. basically, I, 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 I watched over her 
So then I listened over, does she still breathe? Still breathing. <laughs> and everything. Uh, yeah, but it's much better. Now that we're like, I think half a kilometer lower than yesterday. More than that. I that think. really, really yeah. changes a lot. How do you feel about knowing that today we'll be walking through a forest at one point, at good, some point? Good, good. I'm looking forward to that. You and I joked about the tree line yesterday. There's a company named Treeline Productions. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really sure if it was meant to be above Treeline Productions or below Treeline Productions, or slightly above or slightly below. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking forward to trees. I am. It's okay, b rocks, boulders, uh, huge big rocks, it's, it's fun. Um, but trees is something different. Yes. I grew up. It's easier to with hide trees. an emergency behind a tree than behind a rock. <laughs> what, what do you mean by emergency? <laughs> now we get to the real thing. <laughs> um, um, well, one of, those, that. <laughs> one of those emergencies where you need to have a, a Kleenex uh, and some. But you have some need some tissue and some baby wipes. Uh, that kind of an emergency. That kind of an emergency. Mm -hmm. and well, that that uh, certainly is an emergency emergency. Even even though I for me those are now much less common because uh, I'm I think I killed all the germs that uh, had anything to do with that or most of them. So I'm getting more to normal and also to more normal frequency now. You are a mean killer. I'm a mean killer. Yeah. I just I just there, uh, there's no way to come here. Uh, that's what I learned now. There's no way to come here without Cipro and without Flagile. Those two um, are turning out to be lifesaver for me. And because without it's just cough no, drops. Without cough drops. Cough drops yeah. It's just no fun to... <laughs> Do you know Monty Python's um, uh, Marathon of the Incontinent? No, here, hold on a second. Save that thought. All right, so Chris had just gotten to the money. Have I ever heard of Monty Python? The what? Have you ever heard of the Monty Python's? Monty Python's like, Marathon, of the Marathon of the Incontinent. And he's saying that, and I just realized, oh, I'm gonna have an emergency. <laughs> so I stopped filming, and I ran to the bathroom, and everything's Very fine. fine. But uh, anyway, so I'm gonna let Chris finish. Uh, Finish, finish his story. So cough, awesome. cough, cough. Yeah. Uh, so, so I. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, got the ND filters out. Yeah. You're all set. I, I highly suggest you go on YouTube. And look that up. Monty Python Incontinent. That's all you need to search for, and you'll get this wonderful sketch. It's one of my favorites. Where they run. All those runners, and. They run along a road with, with a, a, like trees, forest next to the road, and every few seconds one of them dives into the forest, comes out three seconds later. <laughs> so you <see> constantly, <laughs> constantly diving into the forest. <laughs> out. I think we can and all picture that clearly in our heads. Sports, <laughs> the sports commentary goes, oh, no, blah, 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 blah. And, oh, he dies in the forest, he has to go again. <laughs> <clears throat> this is. And it's a bit like at the beginning of this trip, uh, of this trek, where various people had had it. We were members of the club, that's what we called it. Uh, and now I'm down to a normal frequency of like once a day and that's very good. <laughs> that's all you need. That's all I need. Once a day and the rest, I, I don't need anything of that other stuff. But. Um, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, it took chemistry to get uh, to that point. I would have loved to not need anything, but hey, there are weird, no <laughs> there are weird germs here that my innards don't know about. If you had four months here, and you spent, you know, a month in the country before trekking, you'd be, you would have been fine. Yes. But you have to take you have to take something because we have such a short amount of time. We have so much terrain to cover, and, and it's, you, just, it's very necessary. <clears throat> and you you can't always be sure what what you get in contact with because they wash salad with water from the tap. The tap water might be contaminated with something that 
we don't know or our right, don't but know. They boil everything. They boil everything, but up here, things boil earlier. At a, yeah, at a lower temperature. So they boil at a lower temperature. So you you'd have to probably in order to get rid of everything, you'd have to boil it much much longer, and. I just don't know they do that. Um, I, I don't even blame them. That's, mm -hmm. that's just, that's the way it is. So, yeah, it takes time for your body to get used to these things. And I kept on joking, like, uh, that these these new <coughs> colonies of, uh, <coughs> of germs have having a party with my old ones. <laughs> and yay, that's party. Oh, I have to go again. <laughs> Monica, how are you feeling? Because you were... Not feeling well at all yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was very difficult for you. Yeah, it was difficult because I was kind of exhausted from the day before when I headed up to uh, Mount Karapata. And I had the last two nights, I had only half a night of sleep. And there comes the day where you have to pay the price for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was yesterday. So I was I was men mentally on, 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 a, yeah, a low point. on a low point. And... Um, <coughs> Concerning my yeah my, my physical power too so I needed one Mars bar and a mango juice in the <laughs> evening to <laughs> so a Mars bar and a can of mango juice yeah Is that, that was and, and you guys are the best I mean I you were still out here I came into the uh, into the tea room and asked for if anyone had mango juice left over or if, if we could buy it here and a Mars bar and Andy gave a Mars bar right away. Here's a Mars bar. <laughs> um, because everyone had been at, the, at that point so far. And uh, Karma brought out a Mars bar from his personal stash. One of the Sherpas. Brought a Mars bar. The Sherpa. The, our head Sherpa. <clears throat> and you gave, he gave me the can of mango juice. I instantly ran out. <laughs> And, and it helped, it helped. <laughs> it made a difference. Yes. So I'm feeling quite fine today, I think. And I'm looking forward to having a huge breakfast. <laughs> huge. Okay. So, we got all that stuff out of the way. Let's see these pillows you guys were talking about. Oh, yeah. Let's see, Monica's got hers right now. Yeah. Monica, show yours first. It's very nice and comfy. And it'll Turn take it it'll take about five minute, minutes and then yeah then it will blow itself up to a nice pillow yeah and it's quite so would you say that's the best pillow you ever camped with in your entire life of course yes yes no <coughs> do you have something better <coughs> well, no ma that make, that that's make, makes noises okay okay put yours <laughs> away Chris put yours away. I'm going to say this again, in case uh, anyone from Thermarest seems to be watching the podcast. So, Monica, in your experience, is there a pillow that can top the wonderful sleep experience you can get with a Thermarest pillow? No, my Thermarest pillow is the best pillow, the best camping pillow I ever had. So, when I'm trekking to Mount Everest... When I'm trekking to Mount Everest, I would ever, ever take my Thermarest pillow with me. Be sure. Okay, let me get a close up on it. Very nice, should, very nice. Turn it around so they can see the logo. <laughs> That's okay, blatant. So, when are they coming on as a sponsor, turn? <laughs> it's got a cool design, too. I'll tell you next time we record. <laughs> it has its own bag, it's a compression bag. That looks sweet. Yeah, I want one. Yeah, Definitely me too. better than my pillow. Mm -hmm. So it gets very small. It gets kind of small, but this is one of the bigger sizes. You can have that in smaller sizes. I think this is M or L. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's it. That's very nice. Thermarest. Yes. Don't leave home without it. Exactly. Okay, so hold on a second. Wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It gets worse. <laughs> the rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day. If you enjoy watching, I'd like to show your support. And you're a member of uh, the Thermarest uh, family of uh, businesses and products. 
then please consider making a donation or sponsorship. At any amount is appreciated, but multi-thousand dollar amounts are very much appreciated. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> all you do is, you know, five, ten thousand dollars a week, and I'll put, you know, a little thank you for Thermo Rest in the credits of my show right before the donation part. You'll be good to go. I swear, your your sales will just skyrocket. All right, so... Or any other gonna, company. <laughs> okay, it's a new day now, right? Okay, so, Chris Marquardt. Hello, John. Let me turn my filter off. All right. So I understand that you have the best pillow in the world. It's by far the best pillow <laughs> in the world. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> okay. Anyone would say anything else. And I am a huge big fan of the mammoth. That's mammoth. Mammoth. It's so, called... Okay, here, hold on a second. Uh, can you push that tag down? Actually... It's it's made I think by a company called Mammut. Yeah, Mammut. They make uh, jackets and exactly. pants, all kinds of outerwear. It's very very high quality, and I'm not just saying that. <laughs> it's very high quality. And the sub brand is called Ayungilak Air Pillow. Okay, so how does it work? Very simple. E, that's, 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 a, that's a nice thing. By the way, this thing weighs a, what, 140 grams. It's nothing. Oh, it really doesn't weigh it's, anything. It's, yeah. it's, it, almost if you filled it with helium, it would probably support its own weight. So, can we get this out of the way? Okay. So the way it works is that it's an air pillow. It's got this little tube. You open it up. And look at this nice color contrast. Oh, nice. Very nice. So you fold it up. You roll it up. Let all the air out. And then put it in this little bag if you want to. And if you properly roll it up, it'll just slide in here. My Easily. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's small. <laughs> that is small. 140 grams. It does um, adjust to your liking, just by the amount of air. So you can make it a bigger, bigger pillow. If you need higher or if you need lower, and it just does the job. And it's tiny. All right, so. When I'm trekking to Mount Everest, right? <clears throat> when I'm trekking to Mount Everest, I take my Ayungilak air pillow by Mammoth. It's the best thing you can ever get. <laughs> He's good at this. <laughs> Mammoth in the credits because Mammoth makes some of the best products in the world. <laughs> that, does that sound about right? Perfect, perfect. I mean, it, is, I, I, I think I own anything else of Mammut. I'm not really sure, but <coughs> this thing is so convincing that next time I go trekking, I'll probably just buy all my equipment from Mammut. <coughs> but of course, when I go trekking into Everest in the Himalayas, I use mountain hardware. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is the truth. I have to be wearing a Patagonia jacket right now, but as you'll notice, my Patagonia logo is covered with my Rust of Everest patch so that it can't be seen. But uh, Mountain Hardware provides some of the best you just that equipment, uh, in terms of uh, outerwear. I wasn't going to get one uh, anyway. <laughs> they also have to be uh, some of the best duffel bags in the world. And uh, quite honestly, they're also just a really good company. And they've been very, very kind to the rest of Everest. In fact, they granted me a pro deal account. So I only have to pay wholesale on all of their equipment. So uh, quite honestly, no joking here. Mountain Hardware really is a wonderful company. They've been very generous with their, uh, with their time and with their uh, products. And uh, it also really helps that uh, my very good friend, best friend Ben Clark, is one of their sponsored athletes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that might have had something to do with me getting a pro deal. 
And I think he actually kind of helped arrange it over a satellite phone uh, while climbing Barunse Peak. <laughs> but uh, that's it for now. Well, the guys are packing up the tents, so I better go pack up my sleeping bag. You guys should probably do that too. And then breakfast is going to be here. And Monica is going to eat the entire breakfast. Yes. All right. Shameless. <laughs> Mountain Hardware also <laughs> provides funding for the Ski the Himalayas podcast. <laughs> little disclaimer there. They're a great company. I love them. Oh, yeah. I love their gear. So. I'd say probably two thirds of what I was too. wearing. So. <laughs> I want a Mars bar. <laughs> I had a Mars bar, yeah, Steve. You can't get them in the U.S. They, they have them here. <clears throat> you used to be able to get them mm-hmm. in the U.S. They have them in South Africa. Yay. Hard to miss the orange pack and the pink hat. These are, excuse me, a whole bunch of uh, the money stones. You can see there's Tibetan writing carved on them. And like everything up there, totally so, done by uh, hand. Here's just a few tips for you uh, if you're just wanting to start out. These are, I think, absolutely crucial. And when you watch home movies, one of the reasons they're so terrible is because people don't follow these very simple, very, very simple tips. So the first thing, <laughs> I want to be able, to, I just want to be able to see the the, the, the students. So there we go. Okay. So <laughs> the first thing is that all of you know how to compose a shot. All of you are extremely good at composing shots. I've seen a lot of your photos, okay? So you have that down. You don't need that lesson, okay? All of it's the same with video, okay? The difference is just that typically from here on out, you're gonna be shooting in a widescreen format. And uh, so your, your composition's gonna, gonna be just a little bit different than uh, when shooting with your DSLR, okay? But uh, the other thing is that you'll be shooting either 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second, typically, because we've got some German uh, participants and we've got a, a North American participants. So, um, all of, you know, I, I know a lot of you have take, already taken a few shots today. So, uh, when you compose your shots, I would compose your shots in the camera uh, without recording, okay? So compose your shot first, and this is just a, this is a beginner tip. Compose your shot first. Once you get it the way you like it, start start rolling. Okay. Uh, with video, the cool thing is that it, it doesn't have to be a still shot. You can move your camera. Okay. So one of the things you want to do is, let's say you want to take a picture. I see the rock here on the ground. Okay. Maybe I want to take this picture, and then I want to uh, tilt up and get a shot of Kyle uh, just admiring the view, okay? What I could do is I could start on the rock, compose my shot, hit record. Here's the first tip. Don't hit record and then move. Hit record, wait for a few seconds, okay? That's called like giving yourself kind of a handle, okay? Because a lot of people are going to be editing their footage because editing software is Ready, ready available, it's uh, very easy to use either on a, a PC or a Mac. So I'd wait for a few seconds, and then I'd make my move up to Kyle's face. Look at him, he's admiring the view, he's having a great time. I've got the footage I want. Thanks, Kyle. I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds. Two, three, four, five. Done, stop recording. Okay, what that does is that gives you flexibility in, uh, if you're going to edit your material um, to, like, if you want to do what's called a dissolve, where you fade from one shot to another. If you immediately start recording and move and then see his face and stop recording, you don't have time to make that fade. Uh, if you do the fade, you'll see it 
pop, you know, just cut to the next uh, next image on the tape. So the first the first tip for this is give yourself some some give yourself some handles. Uh, start recording and hold it for a few seconds. No more than five. You don't need any more than five. And then do, make your move if you're gonna if your shot's gonna uh, be a moving shot. And then when you're when you've gotten what you want, still hold it for a few more seconds and then stop recording. <laughs> That that tip I use uh, every time I shoot, and it's crucial when I edit the show here. So it's something. Which do you like more camera? I really do use. As I'm learning subject I learned the subject. They were really getting into shooting video. <laughs> next next thing we have to do is when we come here we have to make a photo yeah, workshop for just all Sherpas. Sherpas workshop? And Sherpas. Do you know I don't know? Same as Sherpa when I look at the picture. We had a color dark. So I learned a lot about Sherpa. I don't have a clue how to do anything anymore, but it's admirable to think uh you don't want to take any medication. Yeah. But you have such a short time here, you want to enjoy it. Yeah. The Dynamax will be crucial to your German. It has saved me up there. Because he was the same way, he wanted to take it. So you, I know, but I just don't feel like my head is that bad. It's just like, I don't need to have a It's also going to help your body get water. Yeah. Yeah. Which was really helpful up there. It's like, yeah. oh, I can finally yeah. sleep better at night. How I can read. You take? You just take uh, 500 milligrams a day. So, 250 in the morning to come in the evening. Yeah. Oh. It'll make your fingers tingle a bit yeah. or something. Maybe your all. face, your toes, yeah. but yeah. it's okay. Just, yeah. nothing just wrong. briefly. Not, that's the only side effect I have. Yeah. But um, okay. uh, also just drink. When you get the headache, drink water. Yeah, that's what I should do. That's Let me speak right away. Yeah, good. I want to have a problem eating. No, I lost my appetite pretty early and I, I'm a good eater. Really? You'll be fine. You'll yeah. be totally fine. All right, now I'm going to enjoy the chip there. Take care. <laughs> Cheers. Enjoy. Bye. Take care. <laughs> So what are you seeing there, Megan? I am filming people walking towards the sofa in the distance and um, just checking out the lines of all the stone walls. Oh, which stupa? Is it one on our side or is it on the other side? Uh, it's on this side, but it's, it's painted white with black writing on it. Okay. And how are you composing your shot? I'm just curious. Um, stupa in the upper right-hand corner and people walking towards it. And what lens are you using there? Uh, 28 to 300 millimeter. So you were able to get right in on them? Oh yeah, it's a good all-around lens. Nice. And that's just a kit lens, right? No. Um, it's not? Okay. No. Purchase it separately. And you've been happy with it? Oh yeah, definitely. Now, is that the lens you've had most of the time on your? Um, it's, on the way up, I had this one on the most, but then once we got higher towards Everest Base Camp, I switched to the smaller lens because it was lighter. Yeah. Left this one in the... What was your smaller lens? Um, 18 to 55. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you kind of wanted the wide. <laughs> yeah, there. wide is good up there. So, Jeff, what were you just taking a photo of? You saw you in the rapids. I like the light on the water and the fog above and the grass and the rocks to the side. How are you feeling right now? Uh, better than I was yesterday and certainly better than I was the evening before. Can you feel that we're down lower? Oh, I think without a doubt. What's the difference? Uh, I can climb easier, breathe a little bit easier, sleep better. Still don't have my appetite back. But I'm sucking on the candy, so I'm trying to get my calories. I'm forcing myself to eat. I'm not enjoying it, but I am eating. I think it's enough to, to stay uh, in what we call the medical terms, 
positive nitrogen balance. <laughs> uh, you're not enjoying the eating, but you're still enjoying the trek. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. I'm enjoying the trek. And what lens are you using right now? That looks uh, pretty large, so it looks like something that uh, would, look, would be a lot easier to carry down here. This has been my utility lens for the whole trek. It's a uh, Nikon uh, AF-S 24 to 70 millimeter uh, f2.8 uh, G ED lens, which basically uh, most so-called kit lenses, uh, as you change the focal length, um, the minimum aperture will go up. As you go to a more telephoto focal length, it takes a lot more engineering to maintain that low f-stop in a. In a throughout the entire zoom range. This is truly a professional lens. I splurged and got this lens for this trip. And you've been really happy with it? Oh, I love the lens. It's great. I mean, I haven't... I don't know that I've actually printed anything uh, that I've shot with this lens yet, but what I see on screen looks really good. I mean, at least in terms of the image quality, not necessarily in terms of the composition. But is there anything on the way down that you're hoping to get a photo of that you might have seen on the way up and didn't like, just too tired at the moment? Absolutely, yes. I am hoping to get set up my tripod, use my ND filters, which I couldn't find until I got to the top of the evening, and get a shot of a waterfall in time lapse in the middle of the day, so that the water looks kind of a uh, like candle wax. You know the shots. I've never done that. I've been dying to get one of those shots. But you need that. You need to take. Uh, you need to use a slow shutter speed in sunlight. It's impossible to do without overexposing, unless you use a really thick neutral density filter, which I have in my pack. Okay. The question now is: Do you remember where that waterfall is? I have been told. That is below Namchi Bazaar, and that's my recollection. You've been told it's just a five-minute walk for me. No, no, no. It's just a shortcut. Here, well, we'll, no, take, no. we'll, we'll take this we're, shortcut. We're, we're going to see that waterfall tomorrow. That's the reason I will carry my tripod that day and my tripod head. Ah, the sun. It's coming out. Do, 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 do. Uh-huh. Yeah, obviously that's a pretty... What, what what Jeff said it was pretty common sem sentiment. I think um, everyone was starting to feel better from the lower altitudes. Uh, not everyone was, was eating well, but irregardless, everyone was still having a really good time. And sometimes it's it bears mentioning that even when everyone's miserable, they're still really happy to be there. <laughs> Uh, on these treks so well uh, next week we hit a major milestone in the trek and uh, that I guess one of them could be the uh, appearance of trees but the uh, the true major milestone uh, is the taking off of the long underwear <laughs> so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll hit we'll deal with that uh, next week and um i have such a good photo of that oh, do John. You? <laughs> <laughs> yes i do yes i once again showing that i'm not terribly uh modest but in any case um <laughs> hopefully that'll be a teaser for some people i don't know uh, any, <laughs> anyway thanks so much for joining me guys really appreciate it you're welcome that was a you're welcome. pleasure <laughs> and see you yeah, again. we'll see you guys uh all next week thanks so much bye right, bye bye john hey Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day, and watching the show has become a part of many people's weekly routine. The show will always be free to download, but it's by no means free to produce. Please help me cover my costs by making a small monthly or one-time donation from the right sidebar on my website, and in return I'll give you some cool bonus materials. A donation of any amount will grant you access to some interesting video content, including high-definition versions of several podcast episodes a one-time donation of $25 or more, or any of the monthly donation options will additionally grant you access to a downloadable version of the film Everest The Other Side, which episodes 1 to 61 are based on. I really cannot express how vital these donations are, and if you've made a donation, thank you so much. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. 
Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com.